Hello again, everybody. This is Joe Larson and Chuck Schultz. You're watching 505 on Racing Show. Tonight, we're going to talk about the memory of Mike Stefanik a little bit and talk about what went on in Vegas and some other news in the NASCAR world when we come back. Eatradio.com. We start off on a sad note today. Uh, we lost Mike Stefanik yesterday. Mike Stefanik uh, died of prank crash near his home in Rhode Island. Of all things, I mean, uh, um, it, it's it's a sad day um, for his family, for his friends, uh, for the racing community. As uh, those of you who watch our show know, the racing community is deeply um, close and look after each other like your brother and sister. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It's, uh, <clears throat> it's a hard thing to take on a Monday, any day for that matter, but uh, it's a hard thing to take on a Monday and uh, you know, unreal. You know, when I got the news last night, I, I was... I was, I was at a party, and I was like, all of a sudden my whole demeanor changed. I was like, whoa. And yeah. you're saying to yourself, this, this can't be real. No. This I'm, can't be right, you know? And, 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 and I've known of Mike, I've known Mike, oh uh, man, since, I'm gonna say since the 80s, when he was racing in tour races at, at the Long Island at the Riverhead Raceway. And he was one of those tough competitors, I mean, um, Mike Stefanik is one of two drivers in NASCAR history to win nine national series or touring championships. Um, he died in a single plane, single-seated plane crash, and he was 61 years old. It was one of those ultra lights, uh, I think like a John Denver uh, prototype job, one of the ones you build, you know. Uh, Mike was the winningest driver of the NASCAR Wheeling Modified Tour with a career which spanned nearly 30 years. In addition um, to his seventh tour championship, he completed, um, he, 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 he completed a remarkable feat of winning the Whaling Modified Tour Championship and the Bush North, now known as the k and Pro Series East uh, title simultaneously in 1997 and 1998. And we were talking this before the show. That's when the Bush North and the Modified Tour was primarily in the Northeast. And still an awesome feat. It's unbelievable that, to be able to pull that off. And, you know, just like, it's hard to, it's hard to fathom. He's done so much racing. Yeah. I, I can't imagine, I mean, how, millions of laps? I mean, uh, I mean of, all, of all things, you know. It's incredible. And, and his nine... Uh, National NASCAR Championships tied him with Hall of Famer uh, Richie Evans for the most in NASCAR history, and that includes every series other than, of course, the weekly series, which is, is a, you can't really make a comparison to. Um, Stefanik was also a competitor in the Gander Outdoor tr uh, Truck Series, and he was the Rookie of the Year in 1999 at 41 years of age. He was a six-time nominee for the NASCAR Hall of Fame, which in, in my opinion, and the opinion of many others here in the Northeast, modified drivers get bypassed. <coughs> I know, and he would get passed twice, right? Yeah. Um, uh, he had 74 NASCAR wheeling modified victories, 13 of which came in 1998, and he holds the tour record for poles um, with 48 on the wheeling modified tour. Uh, Mike Stefanik, um, tough, fair, competitor, in the words of Justin Bonsignor, uh, he ran you hard, he ran you clean, and at the end of the day, he would talk to you, critique you. Uh, Justin offers some of his success 
to his post-race discussions with Mike Stefanik. And I never saw Mike Stefanik go run it over to a guy and try to drag him out of the car. He, no, no four by four in hand? No, he, he sat at the end of his hauler. He, he tried to collect his thoughts, let the dust settle and have a drink of water. Like that race in Daytona when he got dumped, coming for the checkered flag. I remember that. And, and on national TV, he, he made that comment. Yeah, that and was very not like him. Very not like him. But, you know, when you, you get to say, I won at Daytona, he, he could taste the champagne coming oh, yeah. off that last corner. Yeah. And, and I happened to be an official at that event. And I remember standing over by him because we anticipated something. Something was going to happen. And he just sat there, didn't say a word. And of course, the reporters got to stick the microphone they got in it his in face. There. You know what? That's and, and he made that, that comment. And not that it was such a bad comment, but then he needed an extra. He needed an extra minute. Is what he, he needed. He did. He, he really literally did. a minute is what he needed. And um, and he would have brought it right back in. Yeah. It, it's just. It's it's just sad that, uh, and I say a young guy. I'm, I'm saying he's a young guy because he's my age at 61 years he old. He is a young guy. I mean, uh, I just you know, it's, it's hard to believe. Honestly, it's hard to believe he hasn't raced since 2014. Yeah, we um, were talking about that. You know, he's one of those guys where, when you talk about the tour, or you talk about modifieds, you just automatically assume he's there. Right. You know, it's uh, in when we do the the marketing thing. You know, uh, we've marketed so much uh, at the Village Music Shop over the years that uh, people still come in, and they we probably haven't had a commercial on in ten years, if not fifteen. And people come in and go, oh, "I heard your commercial on the radio, Mr. Big. He's funny." Yeah. Meanwhile, we haven't had a commercial on in that many years because after a while, you get saturated to the point where people just think that you, they heard your name. Right. And he's that kind of guy. You hear the results and you're like, well, you just assume that Mike was up in the top ten somewhere. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, he was racing. He was there. You know. You, you, you know, um, the Modified family has, has lost some, some big guys over the years. Yes. Big absolutely. guys. Absolutely. Um, and today, the day after Mike Stefanik's tragic plane crash, uh, is two years to the day that we lost Ted Christopher. And... Um, there was a picture, I don't know if I used it for the show, but there was a picture that I had posted earlier that showed Mike and Teddy shaking hands after a race of yeah. probably ran one and two. And, and I picture in my head that when Mike gets to the gates of Heaven Mode That's Speedway, gonna happen, yeah. Teddy's going to shake his hands and say, welcome aboard, let's, let's go kick let's some butt this. here. You know? We got a call for you. Come on, let's go. Let's go. You know, I'm, thinking, uh, I'm thinking in heaven like your car comes with you, like your favorite car. Your favorite car? car? Yeah, I think you're right. That would be know? cool. I, I don't have a favorite car. <laughs> you have a favorite car. Do I? Yeah, I think you do. <laughs> the, the, the Joe Harmon 52. Oh, I was thinking about the Nova. The Nova. See, I don't remember, remember the, You don't remember the Nova? I remember the Nova. <laughs> that 72 Nova? Yeah, I don't remember that. <clears throat> yeah, but it's, it's, you know, there's a lot of, lot of our guys in the last few years that, that have gone back home, so to speak. Yeah. And, um. Yeah, it certainly has. And, you know, well, you guys chiming in the you know, uh, chat some, room. Some I was there for, some I wasn't. But, you know. Uh, I'm telling you, how many times sitting in the stand watching him race? Uh, just, I, you know. And I, and I can remember. Grabbing the fence, watching him, just, you know. Yeah. All those guys, you know. And uh, the, the sad part about this whole thing is it's what it boils down to at this point. It's not like you're going to weddings anymore. And it's, uh, yeah. you know, you, you're, going to, you're going to, unfortunately, you're going to funerals because people are getting older. But. Right. And you know, you, all right, it's fine. But l when you think about it, the last couple of guys we lost, we lost them in planes. Right. I'm thinking what we need to do is we need to have these races spread out further so they get drive there. Can't be doing planes anymore, guys. Right. I mean, yeah, it's, you know, it's, with this, it was a hobby for him. It wasn't like he was going to the track. Yeah, this is just something that he did for fun. Just something he did for the hell of it, yeah. You know, and, but uh, but I, I remember another raw emotion time with Mike Stefanik, and it was, um, I, I, it, the schedule kept getting changed, rewritten, redone, redistributed, and we used to have scuff sessions to put, when, when I was under modified as an official, to put our rubber back on the racetrack. And um, he was the first car out. And at certain racetracks, you don't want to be the first car out. And he thought yeah. it was a scuff session to put our rubber, because they do two laps slow in right. line. Right, sure, sure, hot laps. Line back up. Guy in pit road was 
go, you're next. And Mike Stefanik thought it was a scuff session. It was time trials. And he didn't realize that. He took the green, he took the white, and when he went in past, took the white, he realized it was time trials. And when he came down pit road after ending up with three quarters of a lap of time trial, and he sat there fuming, hitting the steering wheel, as you can understand, and, and he kept saying, I have nobody to blame but myself. When he got out of the car, you could still see he was upset. And then by the time time trials was over, he was the Mike Stefanik that everybody knew. But back in his hauler, his, his disappointment at what he just did. You know, he was driving for you know, Sanderson at the time and a Flamingo Motorsports. And it was, it was a tough thing for everybody else to see that he had a, like a, had a to, blip. Had to work through it. You know? And you know but what? Everybody makes that, mistakes. Other than that, he was, he was a tough competitor. He ran you clean. I, I don't think I ever saw him initially push somebody out of the way. He passed cars pieces at a time. You get a bumper, you get a wheel, you get the B post, you get the door, get the A post, get a wheel, get an exhaust pipe, get a bumper, and then go. He would take four laps sometimes to pass some of the tough guys. Yeah, because he didn't want to do the wrong thing. Exactly. But you know, you, 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 you have that, and you know, it's, it's even hard for me to talk about you know, Mike Stefanik, and you know, like I said, I, I've, I was on the tour starting in 2002, kind of background work, and then race director in 2003. And I had a lot of discussions with Mike Stefanik, a lot of talks with Mike Stefanik at many of the tracks. Mike, I, I would ask Mike to do the rookie meetings because he probably had more races at some of these tracks than people had laps. Yeah. And he was the go-to guy. It was him or Ricky Fuller in most cases, or, or Abe Flemke Jr. But the way he talked to these rookie drivers, you know, it was all business. All business. Ricky Fuller made a joke out of it. It was funny. Ah, ha, ha. But Mike, it was, it was all business. And it was like going to a college class, and there's the professor. Yeah, he didn't because he, he wanted to make sure you knew what he was coming. Get oh, out yeah. of the way. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> right, this sounds good to work. Let me show you. But, you know, I, I, You're going to be driving around for a while, yeah. and then all of a sudden you're going to see me. This is when I, you see me get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> and it's very serious. <clears throat> um, but yeah, it's, it's we, 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 you know, like you said earlier, you know, we're at that age now, we're starting to lose people by natural causes and, and to lose somebody by a cause like, you know, By an accident. By an accident. A plane. You, you think of how many races this man, and I was going to look it up, but I didn't want to. Ted Christopher didn't. in a plane, yeah. I mean, just, you know. you know. How many races they raced, how many lap, tens of thousands of laps, and, and they, Got out of the car at the end of the, the, the show, took the helmet off, took a drink of water, brushed themselves off, and, and got I ready for the next one. And grabbed the burger off the barbecue, and they yeah. were ready to go. And, and they go flying. And how many times they're on the, they, they raced how many thousands and thousands of laps on the edge? Right. With a concrete wall inches away. Inches. With another car, or three cars, or four cars inches away sometimes not even inches away, sometimes on top of them. <laughs> At 180 miles an hour. At 180 miles an hour. Yeah. It, it's tough. And that's like slipping in a supermarket and breaking your neck. That's, that's just yeah. you know, ridiculous, almost. Yeah. I mean, but, you know, it's plain, plane. Uh, you know, I'm guessing it's something that he was, it's a hobby he had. I guess he was flying them, but building them. Or, you know, you don't it, know all the details yet. But. You're so right on that. It's, you know, I, and, and I know, I mean, like, we joke about it. I, I was a mid-pack guy at best, at best, and and that's if there was a full field. <laughs> but you know, I, I miss the rush. I miss flipping the switch, pressing the button, and the jiggling of the, of the, the, the motor, and the sound of the exhaust, and the smell of the fuel. To this day, 
I mean, not that it's that long since I raced, but it, you, you miss that. And, and it's the rush. I didn't care if I finished last or didn't finish at all, but I got that rush. I miss the accomplishments of getting to the track, rebuilding the car, fixing it, getting it ready to go, and the camaraderie of all the people, and you know, you had the food and the soda and the beer and whatever <laughs> else you had. And, you know, you'd, you'd kind of like, you know, you'd run the car, you'd do your thing, you'd put it on the trailer, and you'd stand around and just, you know, watch everybody else shoot the breeze, and it's a, it's a, it's a really big family, it really is. A racing it, family it is, is a really big family. And, you don't realize how big that is sometimes. Uh, you know, you, even if you're a guy uh, like me that maybe didn't fraternize with a lot of people. Right. Everybody knew your name. Everybody knew your car number. Yep. You know, I'd get out of the car after a race and I looked like I was upset. Next thing I know, I got like 25 people following me because they wanted to make sure if I got into trouble that uh, they were going to be there to help me out and take care of me. You know, and it's <laughs> like... Uh, it's, it's a family, and it's, it, you know, it and it's, it's, there's a lot of love in that. You know, whether you're beating somebody or you're taking them out or whatever, there's still a lot of love involved in that, whether it's from the fans or from your competitors. And, I mean, I remember one time getting taken out last lap, last turn, one of those things because he couldn't catch me and get around me. And this lady came into the pits. I'll never forget this lady. She had, she had two kids in tow. They were small enough where you had to hold their hands. They couldn't. They couldn't be left on their own. Yeah. She had a baby on her, on her arm. She comes in. I wouldn't even tell you the expletive she used, but she said, I don't care. She said, when you go home tonight and you put your head on that effing pillow, <laughs> I want you to know you won that race. There was no husband involved. It was her and three kids. And she, she said, I just wanted to come in here and let you know that. That's all she came into the pits for. Yeah. Because she says, you, you led that whole race. Yeah, you know what? It happens, right? Yes, it does. It's, it's a shame. It really is. So on, on behalf of Ultimate Media and Radio TV Network, the 505 on Racing Style, myself, Chuck Bonney, um, our prayers and condolences go out to the Stefanik family, his friends, his race team, and anybody who he touched over those 30 years of racing. Uh, our prayers are with you guys. Yeah, and, uh, absolutely. It's, it's a sad, sad day. Um, I'm just happy that I had the opportunity, A, to watch him race, to be an official in the events he raced in, and to know Mike Stefanik, the man, the person, the guy outside of the fire suit, outside yeah. of the race. Get to meet him, get to know him. So uh, it's, it's... Just to watch him race. Yeah. I mean, you can tell. You know, you can tell a lot from when, the way somebody races. You can kind of, you can kind of tell. Yeah. And uh, you know what kind of person, what kind of, what kind of man they are. You know, woman. And uh, you, can, you can tell the personality. It's a lot going on there. You yes. know what I mean? Just the way they handle all the competitors and pass them on the racetrack. Even if they, you never said a word to him, even if he never shook his hand. Right. And no matter how you slice it or dice it, you feel connected to these people. Yes. If you sat in the stands and you watched them turn a lap, or you saw them on social media or something. You feel a connection, and you know if you're hurting at all, um, our prayers are with you. Absolutely. All right. We're going to take a break, and we come back. We're going to talk about Vegas. What went out there uh, racing wise this weekend? When we come back, stay with us. Hey, hey, what's up? Oh, I said, was going to say what's up for some reason. Hey, hey we're, we're set, set it up, up, and you're watching the Enradio TV Network. Hey, Joe. Hey, Chuck. Mini Cardamone here, 0630beerbomb.com, BMC Marketing. Congrats on your 400th show, 5050 on Enradio.com. You have to go work. I know you guys out there, you need some help with the beards? Look us up, 0630beardbomb.com. Village Music Shop of Master. 1 800 Hey Dude, your full service store with personalized attention, school band instrument rentals and sales, music instruction on all instruments for all styles and age groups, for guitars, drums, amplifiers, PA systems, and accessories. It's Village Music Shop, 1495 Montauk Highway in Mastic. Call 1 800 Hey Dude or go to villagemusicshop.com. 
Hi there, this is Buddy from Less Than Jake, and you are listening to In Radio TV. You're probably watching it too. As you can tell, we're uh, proudly uh, powered by Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. I tell you, it's, uh, it's just a tough day today. Tough day. Yeah. Tough day. It was a tough night. It was you know, tough. It, it's, it's funny. Um, not that it's funny. Um, last night, I had a dream of the first time I saw Mike Stefanik race. And it was probably a Wednesday night show at Riverhead Raceway back in the 80s. Oh, I was there for that. Yeah. yeah. And, and I remember a, a Two of Mods used to come in at, uh, on Wednesday. I used to yeah. race, yeah. And, and it was just, I was sitting in my normal spot. I always sat in the same spot. Why I sat in the same spot, I don't know. I think that's because my grandfather, when he went, he always sat in the same spot. So force of habit, force of habit. You, you know, like the angles, you know. Yeah, it's the same people, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah um, you get a crew over there. Yeah. And, the two old guys in the balcony complaining about everything. Yeah. Back in that day. From the Muppets, different. the two old guys in the top row. <laughs> what the hell are they doing? You know, <laughs> back in our day. Uh, they, they didn't do that. And I remember saying I would never be like those guys. Oh, yeah, that's too late. That I'm should, those guys. You are that guy. <laughs> <laughs> that oh, ship, my God. That ship sailed, I'm telling you right now. Oh, man, I'm, I'm that guy. I'm that guy, I, you know. And, and now I say, no, Nick, I see, I brought my kids, they, they were still in the womb, my kids. Uh. <laughs> we brought them to the races. <laughs> they were like, they, they had to be held. They were the, the, the twins, they were so yeah. little. Everyone I remember, came. I remember. And, <laughs> I remember when they crawl, were crawling all over crawling me, like, floor, like, right? the little, like my little dog Sandy. I'm like, and I, now I look at people, I says, I can't believe they brought their kids here. What the heck is going on? <laughs> I was like, I what is this? What's going on? What is this? A playground over here? Oh, my goodness. Oh, the things. The, just funny how life just threw this curveball at you. Yeah, you know, I, uh, I don't remember how young I was. Uh, I think there was an aunt or somebody we lost in the, in the family. And my father sat me down, and I was pretty young. I think I was uh, probably too young to go to, you know, funerals that young. And he said to me, he said, you know what? He says, it doesn't matter if you're sitting on the edge of a, of a wishing well, throwing coins in there, he goes, when it's your time to go, it's your time to go. Yeah. You know, when, when, when God takes that book and he turns that page for the next day, whoever's on that page, they go. it's their time to come back. Yeah, they go. And my father told me that. My father passed yeah. away young. He died in my arms at 16. But, yeah, I, you know, I, I always remember that. Um, yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's funny you say that because you know, my mom grew up in a racing family. My grandfather was into it. My, my uncle, her brother, he raced. Her, her other brother raced. And she hated for me to, be, to even talk about racing. And, and I remember when we lost Tom Baldwin Sr. And I was the race director. And I kind of blamed myself, you know, because the infield was still underwater, but the track was dry, you know. Cars don't go into the infield. Yeah. But anyway, um, I remember my mother calling me up and she goes, what's this I hear that you're thinking of leaving NASCAR? I said, ma, guy died on my watch. Now I'm thinking she's gonna say, all right, good, just finally you got your, to your senses and you're getting out of the racing. Yeah. Nope, 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 nope. Mom said whether he was on the highway coming home, at his shop working, home watching TV, out to dinner, God said it's his time. It's time to come, yeah. And you know, it's funny when, when it comes from your mother. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, that it was, takes a whole different meaning. <laughs> that was it. It came from my father. And he's like, I could walk outside and get hit by a bus tomorrow. He said yeah. to me. Yeah. He said, You never know. Yeah. He said, So you do what you got to do and yeah. leave well, the anyway. rest to where it's got to be. But well, that was it's still hard for us at the left back here. You know, I'm thinking uh, we all go up there. There's a nice big racetrack. Oh, there is. Yeah. I'm thinking I got good bathrooms too. I don't think you have to go to the bathroom in heaven. 
I kind of enjoy going to the bathroom, though. That, that would be so. Well, anybody that, that would be has some. a picture window across from their phone. Yeah, well, forget about the picture window. <laughs> Oh man! Come on, uh, three o'clock in the morning. You get up, you hold it onto the wall. I mean, that's a good that's a good time, right there. I guess, I guess. <laughs> but you know, you, you, there's got to be because there's, there's got to be a racetrack in heaven. And there's so many guys there that they, that went. They race every night. You know, they race, and 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 your car don't get wrecked. It's like you press the reset button. Oh, and, it's like the NASCAR game. You, yeah. You turn the damage part off. Yeah, you that's turn my it off. That's my brother. That's my brother does. Yeah. You know? So there's no damage. Yeah, because if I don't turn it off, I'm lucky if I make two laps. Well, I'm guessing if you damage it and crash it, you just it automatically comes back to. I'm thinking. It's perfect. I'm thinking, and you don't need a crew when you come in. And it's just like the. Well, games. you gotta have the crew. I mean, you know. If they're dead. <laughs> what? what do you mean if they're dead? If they're living, they're not gonna be your crew. Well, Tim, come on. There's gonna be people that are gonna be there. <laughs> you don't know them. Like little auras that are floating around. Well, they may still come and help you. Listen, when I was there, could you imagine? They were, they were auras. <laughs> I didn't see people with jacks and, and guns and no, not not guns, guns, but you know, air guns. Air guns. Yeah, I'm just saying. They sent, they sent you back. They're like, we don't want this guy. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm having fun today. Anyway. <laughs> well. You we know, it's a, it's, a sad, it's a sad thing, but... It, it is, and, I'm, and I try to laugh so I don't cry. Try to, so. make, try to make light of it, yeah. There's, there's no. no way to make light of something like that. It, it's, it is, it's tough. And, you know, we were talking off, offline in, in, during the commercials was we try to pay our bills, which aren't really getting paid lately. From what I understand. <laughs> we got to take a look, serious look at that. They're knocking at the door right now. <laughs> you can't hear it. If it goes black all of a sudden... Don't worry. We're still, we still have audio. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Oh, yes, the cup cars were at Vegas uh, this past weekend. And uh, it was a decent race, but there was a couple of un upset people. We got the results coming up here now. I think. No, we did. Oh, yeah. I got ahead of myself there. I didn't follow the script. Yeah. It's all right. Uh, the winner, Martin Truex Jr. and Kevin Harvick was second, Brad Keselowski was third, Chase Elliott fourth, Ryan Blaney fifth, followed by Alex Bowman in sixth, William Byron seventh, Kyle Larson eighth, Joey Logano, who was like tearing it up in the beginning, uh, ended up finishing ninth, and Ryan Newman uh, with a top ten there. Um, Mr. Kyle Busch was not pleased after the event. Now, I know he's oh, the well. type of guy, he has to win or it's not good. Yeah, well. Well, you know, he, he, he crashed and he, some rookie guy got in his way and, but you know what? It's part of the racing. I watched the video and the, the rookie kid held his line. Now, what are you supposed to do? Look at his hair. Oh, let me just get out of the way. Kyle, Kyle Busch is coming, yeah. Yeah, and, and Kyle Busch is upset. So Kyle Busch was interviewed after the race, and one of the things he said that I agree with is this. He hit it right, and I quote, we're in the top echelon in motorsports, and we get guys running with us who never even won a late model race. Running here on a racetrack, they don't know where to go. I don't know if I agree with the bottom part, but He's right about the top part. These guys, these kids are being sucked up from legend cars, put in development programs, and they're in cup cars. They didn't even graduate high school or college. Yeah. He, he's, he's not wrong. They haven't developed maturity-wise to be able to do this. Or, and, and I hate to say this because I sound like that old guy that sat behind me when I was a kid, respect-wise. The old guy in the balcony. They, they, they show no respect because if they bang it up, beat it up, and break it up, Daddy and the crew are going to fix it for next week. Back in the day, here I go saying that again, but it's true, the guys that bang them up, beat them up, and wreck them, put them back together had themselves. To fix it. And it came out of your pocket. And it came out of their pocket. That was a long time ago. That's, and, uh, you know, you know. Now they just slide one out of the truck. It's like a Pez dispenser. Yeah, I mean... 
and pull another one out, and we'll use this one. And, and these guys would drive across. There was no going back and forth with jets and rigs and haulers. Some of them were on open trailers, and they, and they did the northern swing, the western swing, back then the southern swing. You know. And they were pulling it with a 55 pickup truck. Yeah. And they go to the local parts store and buy parts. And yep. fabricate it, and those days are so right. much gone. It's and it's crazy. Kyle Petty would, would say, I, I, I watched Kyle Petty's show on, on, on the internet too, and he said my mother would get get a couple of pounds of bologna and some white bread, and, and, and he'd be there with the Allison kids and his kids, and you know and him and, and his, his siblings, and, and his mother's just making bologna sandwiches and, and and water. Yeah, because that's all they could afford. You know, it's not like today. Oh my goodness. It's just not like today. You know, even the local tracks are so far beyond that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I went to the tour race at my local racetrack, Riverhead Raceway, and it was, like I said last week, it was an awesome show. But I was looking at, like, the haulers and guys who have to drive, like, five miles <laughs> to get there had haulers like cup teams. Yeah. Now, hey, if you got it, Go for great. it, yeah. Right, great. But is it really necessary to, to have that? I mean, God forbid you break something. Send somebody in the pickup truck to your shop. You need, a, you need an earth bar? Okay. You wouldn't even get it off the Jackson by the time the guy went there and back. And I don't mean that. I'm not picking back on Back in the day, I mean, I would give the guy some money and the keys to, well, he would have his, his car, and I'd be like, yeah. go down to the auto zone over there, whatever it was, and uh, or Pet Boys, or whatever it was at the time. Yeah, and this yeah. is what I need. Get me two calipers, get me two yeah. rotors, whatever yep. I needed. Yeah. Well, now you can't do that even because now when you get there, they go on a computer. You make a model. <laughs> now you can just go, yeah, I have a Ford. Okay, yeah, here see, you go. I, I have but a Chevy. I, but, I knew, but I knew that. Yeah. But, uh, and then and other interviews with Kyle Busch later on, um, he must have got um, scolded because he was doing the interview, but he wasn't doing the interview, and he kept saying, I'm only here so I don't get fined, like a robot. That's not good. Yeah, no. That's not good. And they'd ask a question, they go, eh. And what do you have to say about this? I'm only here. So he must have said that five or six times. He thinks he's a football player now? You know, I mean, come on. Yeah. Stuff that you can't always win. You can't always win. And they, they, make, they made rules in the lower divisions or lower series for, for guys like him who would go in and, and win every week in, in the, the truck series and the Xfinity series. And it's, it's just, I don't know. And I, and I had the opportunity to run into him in, in an airport in Charlotte. He was headed out west, and I was headed back home um, back in May. And, you know, yeah, he talked for a little bit. But he goes, hey, listen, i got to get a plane. They didn't even announce the boarding call yet. It wasn't like, you know, hey, look, i got to go there boarding. His head's too big. You know? Yeah. You don't know. I'm a fan. I'm a fan of racing. Yeah. He thought he was going to, you going to jump him or something. Nah, I mean, I, I, you know, <coughs> I don't want to get my butt kicked in an airport. <laughs> I'm going to say the wrong thing. I mean, I don't know if he can kick my butt. I'm an old man now, and he was a yeah. young kid. But, you know, I yeah. am an old man. We got guys in the chat. They're saying that uh, sportsman drag racing is just as bad. I'm sure it is. I yeah. mean, uh, you know. It's all out of control. It's, uh, you know, hey, you know, everybody's pushing to try to, you know, and, well, and you know what, when it comes to haulers and trucks and we, we, people like that stuff. We, I mean, if I, if I can afford it, I would have had it too, right. you know. We're in an era where everybody gets a trophy. Yeah. And, uh, and they want to get that trophy. Back in my day, when I wanted to get a trophy. Yeah, back in your day, when you won that race, there was no trophy. There was no trophy. There was no trophy sponsor. I got a hat. I'm like, where's the trophy? Yeah. All, all we got is a hat. I got a hat. And they're doing <laughs> the interview. Where's my trophy? Where's my trophy? <laughs> I only got <coughs> one trophy racing in my entire life. Oh, no, and that was for the most spectacular crash. You got it. Oh, I knew it. See, I got and it. And when I accepted it, I'm on crutches, and I could barely walk. I'm like, and, and I was in the front row. But that tables. made it real. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That made it real. And they put me at a table. People, I'm like, I don't want to be at that table. And they're trying to tell me, oh, I'm at that table. It's not that far to walk. Look, once I'm in, I'm not getting up. Put me with my people. Oh, no, you're getting up. 
Yeah, yeah, but see, it's it's like evil can evil. After he goes over the thing and tumbles and crashes and the whole thing, you wanted me to get up and wave to the crowd. Yeah. And that was your wave to the crowd. Oh, I waved. Yes, yeah, so you had to have the crutches. It yeah, made it real. Yeah, because the Endoro group was there, and they were there the day to work, and they all got up and clapped. Then you don't want to be the only one sitting, so everybody else got up too. Yeah, I was like, ah, okay. Uh, yeah, that was All right, right let's get up. Yeah, oh, well. But anyway, the Xfinity series was out that way as well. <laughs> we get any side tangents. Pretty cool. We do, right? Yeah. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, what do we got there? Tyler Reddick was the winner there, followed by Christopher Bell. Brandon Jones was third. Cole Custer, fourth. Justin Algai was fifth. Noah Gregson, sixth, followed by Gray Galding, seventh. John Hunter Nemechek, eighth. Riley Herbst, ninth. And Elliot, Elliot Sadler wow. uh, sat in the car, ring rounding out the top ten. Elliot retired last year. Uh, hmm. Now, you know what the deal is, but no race car driver ever retires. They're just looking for a ride. Yeah. He got one at Vegas. But he's one of those guys that you can't understand. He's like the Ward Burton. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, they're going to these shiny, you know, kids that are 14 years old. And yeah. I played golf with him and a couple of the cup guys here on Long Island a few years back. Um, wow. Oh, four. Wow. Holy cow. Back, back in 04. 1904? <laughs> yeah, really? Oh, man. Oh. And, 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 and holy. I, I think one of the Halpin guys is on here uh, you know, listening and watching. And uh, it was his tournament uh, for okay. the Junction Gang in, in memory of Tom Baldwin. And uh, a lot of the guys came. A lot of the guys came. Cup guys and whatnot. He is a big golfer. Yeah. And, and, and um, Tommy Bolden Jr. had a plane, brought some of these guys up, and, and I can remember Casey Kane was surrounded by young girls. Oh, I would imagine. I, and, and I remember my daughter met him, and he shook hands with her, and she was like, oh, I can't wash my hand. Then she wrapped it in a tissue. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. But, did um, you push your way up and get an autograph for yourself? No. I'll tell you what I did do for my, because you know, I, you know me, I would do just about anything there is for my daughters to make them happy. So, and even my sons, too, even though they don't think I would. But anyway. Don't tell me you kidnapped Casey Kane. No. It, we're in Daytona. There's a Kmart on International Drive. I see in the paper, Casey Kane's going to be there. It starts in two hours. All right, kids, we got to go to Kmart. Dad, we don't want to go. Just get in the car. We're going to Kmart. So we go to Kmart. Now, the line coming out of Kmart is already halfway around the store. So I go into Kmart, and I'm looking, you know, around, and this is the line for Casey Kane, and it goes in and up the aisles, back to the garden center, then back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So I go to the... To I know the, where this is going already. I you, go to the manager. You pulled the fire Listen, alarm, didn't you? I'm here to get some, you know, daffodils or something. I, I, I got to wait on line? I go, no, no, you're here to... So, of course, whatever I get, I go get in the garden center, and... Maybe six or eight people before the Casey King starts, I start looking on the shelf there and kind of start moving with those people. My kids got to meet Casey King. We didn't have to wait on mine. I thought you were going to tell me you pulled the fire alarm. No, 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 no. No, as, as an ex You cut, cut on No, as an ex volunteer fireman, somebody could get killed doing that. You don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, as a volunteer fireman, I can tell you that's true. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to do that stuff. But yeah, but it's, you know, it, it, it was a good cause, and, and, and I, you hate to have a memorial thing because, not, you know, and like Mike Stefanik, I'm willing to bet Mike Stefanik gets in the Hall of Fame, the NASCAR Hall of Fame, this year. Yeah. It would have been nice if he got there when he was alive. Yeah. You know? But well, I do it, say that, you know. It's always, uh, you know, a tearjerker when you, uh, you know, you're driving home down Sun State Parkway and Expressway and you see all the, uh, the hook and ladder trucks with the flags stretched out over the, uh, the bridges because somebody passed away, you know? Yeah. And I always said, you know what, uh, there's no reason we can't honor these firefighters while they were alive. Exactly. You know, not to give, you know, I mean, you have a 30, 40, 50 year member, you give him his plaque and his little pin, that's nice, but you know what, you're right. They, they, they should yeah. be honored while they're alive. They should be honored. Oh, yes. And the Gander Outdoor Truck Series had a race this weekend. And that race went something like this. Hey, yes. Uh, Austin Hill was the winner there, followed by Ross Chase Trustain. 
Kristen X was third, Sheldon Creed was fourth, Todd Gilliland was fifth, Brennan Poole was sixth, Brett Moffitt seventh, uh, Ben Rhodes eighth, Harrison Burton ninth, and Dylan Lupton rounded out the top ten. So we're, we're in playoff playoff mode here with these series. Yeah. Um, be interesting to see how the playoffs go. And um, I know somebody was saying to Kyle Bush in the interview, they were trying to get, you know, even though he had a bad finish, finishing 19th, they said, well, you'll have a win. And and it was like a trigger went off, and, and that's what he said something to the effect that I, I don't, I don't want to get in because I won. I want to get in because I beat these guys every week. And like I said earlier, he has to win. Otherwise, he's not happy. Yeah, well, it's a race car driver mentality. I mean, it's a little over the top, but... I was happy finishing some days. Yeah, I was happy coming home with a car I didn't have to fix. No, I, I very rarely did that. You want to fix it? No, <laughs> came home with one that okay. didn't have to be. <laughs> <laughs> Just come home, hit it with a sledgehammer uh, the other yeah. way, and then take it back out the next week. Yeah, yeah that's how it goes. We uh, had a competitor, and uh, my crew chief, I, I'll tell you, Derek, boy, he would be like, I don't get it. How does this guy run so good? He beats it into the wall, then he comes into the pits, and he beats it with a sledgehammer the other way. He goes back out, and he still runs good. Yeah. Yeah, get the get fast style. He he doesn't like Kyle Busch. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm sure you can definitely. Uh, there's a bunch of that going on. You know. But anyway, we're gonna take a break. We come back. We have a, a team announcement. Um, not our team, uh, but uh, some news coming out of the uh, Wood Brothers camp. When we come back. Hey, Joe and Chuck, this is Mike Massaro, formerly of ESPN and NBC Sports, wishing you a congratulations on your 400th episode of Five Off, Five On. It's an absolutely amazing run. Keep up the good work. Hi, I'm Remington. I'm Emerson. And I'm Sebastian. We're Palais Royale, and you're watching in Radio TV. There we go. The world of advertising has changed. Radio, TV, and newspaper revenues have declined drastically. Why? Because businesses have realized that advertising return on investment isn't what it used to be. So what can we do about it? Well, that's easy. Advertise online. Own a local restaurant, real estate agency, or even a national retail chain? Whatever your business, in Radio can get your message out there. And we can do it at a fraction of the cost. Call today and see the difference for yourself. This isn't TV. This isn't radio. This is in Radio.com. Hey, this is Chris Lester Jake, and if in Ravio.com spots you at an event wearing this bracelet, they will give you This is Mike Jarecki from My Race News, and you're watching the Enravio TV Network. Hey guys, this is Jibs from Ocean's Eye, Alaska, and you're watching Enravio TV Network. Welcome back to the show. Welcome. Hey, uh, Matt D. Benedetto will be going to the Wood Brothers. For those who don't know him, I think I have a picture of him. But he will be going uh, to Wood Brothers in 2020. And a lot of this, there's mixed feelings about Matt. There's some people that say he's, 
doesn't deserve a cup ride as others that say that he's this is full-time ride is long overdue. I, I guess it's like vanilla chocolate, Yankees Mets. You know what? There's always somebody that likes it, somebody that doesn't like it. Yeah. And and the Wood Brothers yeah. have good support from from a, a top-notch team. Um, and I, I, I don't know if it's something that I could share, but they, they have a lot of support. And I, and I think that's big. And, and when you look at some of these drivers that, that are mid-pack, so to speak, or they run from like 17th to 23rd every week, sometimes I think all they're missing is one integral piece. And, and it could be a motor. It could be a fabrication issue. Because these cars are so identically prepared. However, when you go through tech and 330 seconds of an inch is go or no go, that 330 seconds of an inch at 210 miles an hour is It's big. a big deal. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. I mean, uh, yeah. <clears throat> Don't want to screw the pooch, but there was, uh, you know, uh, a Riverhead guy who had gone to gone south and uh, made a change in the wind tunnel and um, that year, his driver won that Winston Cup championship. And he got a personal check from the driver. Yes. On the change he made in that wind tunnel. Yes. And it was just a, a fender change or something small, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. Very minute, but it was that much of a difference. Right. And that gave an edge. And you know what? That's all you need is an edge. If it's who I think you're talking about, that same fabricator. Um, saw a loophole in the rules that was caught by NASCAR, but it wasn't one of those big deals. Yeah, there was a fine handed out, but it wasn't a big, you know, like they do today, $50,000. And he was called into the owner's office on Tuesday, and he thinks he's getting fired. And the owner of the team says, I wish everybody on our team we told him right away he wasn't fired, our team, would have the same kind of thought process as you. Yeah. Because that's what I like to see. And then a rules package came out to eliminate that great That, lo that loophole that was there yeah. that uh, gave him the advantage, yeah. Yeah, it, it's, but when you, you see those kind of things, it's, I don't know. And like uh, this one person that's in, in, in our live feed says, it's good to see Matt get the ride. Next, next thing is this was in the works over the course of this year, and absolutely, these these deals don't happen like they're all talking at dinner on the Friday night of a race. They like to make this happen because there's sponsorship deals that have to be made. You know who's the crew chief, who's the who's the spotter, all of that's put together. There's a lot of you know. There's a lot of parts and pieces that go together, and you oh, know yeah. what? Everybody, you know, whether you like this guy or don't like that guy, everybody's put their life and their, right. their everything into this racing deal. Yeah. And there's not even hundreds, there's thousands of people. Right. You it, know, and sometimes it's really not for much. I mean, look at what what the local guys are doing for pennies uh, on the dollar. I mean, yeah. you can't even buy a set of tires, and we're not no, going to get involved in purses and things like that. But, you know, it's this old, you know, emotions run high. It's a sport. I mean, you want to do well, even though, you, hey, you win, you make 200 bucks or whatever it is. You're not buying a set of tires. But it's one of those things, man. You just you're in it to win it, you yeah. know, and it's it's what it's all about. And you know, whether you got the shiniest hauler or the biggest trailer or the nicest trailer, you want to do the best you can in every little aspect of your racing right. business, if you want to call it that. Even if you don't make money at the racing business and it right. costs you money, yeah. you know, it's what it is. I mean, uh, I was there too. I mean, yeah. we all were, you know. Yeah. And if we had the wherewithal, you know, I had a business to dump money in, or you know, to dump money into it, or sponsors whatever it is everybody wants to do that you know right. and it's uh, it's a love you know it it's you know it's I, I, I which is one of the reasons why I really like this sport over all the other ones because most of the other ones are hey I went to school give me 500 million dollars and I'll play on your team mm -hmm. you know these guys are like listen just give me a steering wheel to turn right and left and I'll, I'll be there yeah you know what I mean it's it's kind of a different animal you know I'll sleep on somebody's it's couch cool. somewhere and how many times have you heard that I mean Martin Truex Jr., perfect example. Yep. Whose couch did he sleep on when he went yeah. down there from New Jersey? Yeah. And there he is winning a race. Okay. Michael Waltrip slept at the Petty's <clears throat> house. Because he was so much younger than his brother Darrow. And Darrow was, you know, up here now at this point. He didn't want his little brother tagging along. 
So he stayed with the pennies yeah. until he settled in and got a full-time ride and made some money. It, it's just that's how it is. And when, when I, I think back to a tour race that went back in the mid-'80s at Riverhead. It was a Wednesday night, and it was rained out. So the, the entry blank read, in the event of rain, it's the next sunny day, which should be Thursday. It rained Thursday. It rained Friday. And I can remember, and it rained Saturday. Well, Saturday was going to get rained out or something to the effect. And the announcing team was like, if anybody has room at their house to house these guys because the hotel bills are just out of control, yeah. let us know if you have room and how much room do you have. And from what I remember, and I was younger, it was a lot, it was like 30 years ago, most people who needed a place to stay got one. Yeah. I was probably there for that, too. It was a Wednesday night back in the 80s. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah. You know, it, it's, I don't know. It, it's just, it, it's a fun, fun thing. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, you know, somebody asked me just recently, it was one of my customers, because what do you get out of this racing thing? What, what, Absolutely not nothing. Money, right? So you know what I told him? <laughs> I said, there's three conflicts known to man. It's man versus man, man versus machine, machine versus machine. Auto racing encompasses all three. Yeah. When you think about it. You know, sometimes the machine is good, the man isn't. Yeah. Still makes it happen. Well, it's uh, what is that T-shirt that I have that I've been keeping for uh, 60 years? It's the only sport that requires two balls. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. And I, it's it's just I, I and I saw my future son-in-law. He had he posted something on social media. It said, "Build," and, and, and maybe not exactly. It was, "Build, race, wreck, repair." Repeat. Repeat, yeah. <laughs> I say that all the time when I'm in the shower. I'm like, well, we'll build it, we'll crash it, we'll rebuild it, we'll rebuild it. raise it again. Yeah. But you learn. you learn. And repeat. That's how I got good at, at building bodies. Jay Slice, who, who, unless he has baseball, is never misses a show. Yeah. Um, I got good at building bodies because I wrecked so many times. And I couldn't, at the time, like fix spindles and rear and housings and brakes. And You're a sheet metal guy. I. Right, I, and it got to sheet metal and paint. When my daughter was racing, I just got really smart because we had that big sponsorship, and <coughs> Sundays we had appearances. So I got real smart. I had extra doors, extra fenders. Like the only thing I didn't have extra already lettered <laughs> and made was the roof. And if we if we needed a roof, we needed we were more screwed. Than a roof. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, I, I got smart too. That's why I had a road course car. Yeah, and I'm Kenny Massa, owner of the that 51 was my, uh, uh, tour of my driven by Justin Bonson. You know, he's like, his unforgettable memories. And that's what racing <coughs> does. I, I could look back. I look back to my first race that I viewed, and, and that I went to live. I was seven at the Freeport Municipal Stadium in 1965 with my grandfather. And I still remember like the drivers, the, the, the cars, and Bruno Bracchi, Cookie Visconti, Paul Masiri, all those guys back in those days. You know, I Rose was, Lee, a, a female lady in the powder puff. When my father took me to Freeport for the first time, I was too young to really even know any of that. I was running under the bleachers grabbing bottle caps or something dopey. But I'm in a, I, it was the first time I saw stock cars, and that was like, uh, for me, that was like, wow, to see it this close right. up and personal. I mean, I've seen it on TV. And to me, it was the same kind of car. You know, I didn't know any better. Right. But for me to see it there, I was like, wow, this is great. And to smell it and come home and have the rubber on you and the grit and the smell, and it was definitely, uh, it was something. Yeah. You know, it was definitely something to, to, yeah. to, to see, you know. And then when you know somebody, and whether you know them because they wave to you or you know them. Well, if that was it. My father knew somebody he worked yeah. with. It was a, he was an apprentice with my father, mm -hmm. sheet metal apprentice. and. Um, he gave him a couple of bucks to put our name on the car. Yeah. Wow. So he could buy tires. See? And we watched him race, and it didn't matter that he crashed it up. We just, this is great. We know somebody. That's that, our car. That's oh. our car, yeah. That's it. Yeah. And you got somebody to, to run for, oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. I, I, I remember as a kid going, um, 
and getting magic markers and, and taking a nice brand new T-shirt out of my clothing drawer and putting my uncle's number 39 on. Nice. <laughs> and put his, his name, you know, Johnny Crab figure eight, number 39. And, okay. And, and, you know, trying to draw a checker flag. And then, of course, it runs because, you know, whatever. But you know what? As I a thought kid, I who as, I was. As a, but that's great. Yeah, I thought who I was. That's great. As a, a kid, that's show. great. Yeah. How great! That's a memory you'll never, oh, you know, you'll never, never forget that. Never. That's great. These never. kids that come in when they come in the pits and they come in with the, with the flag. Yep. You know the the checkered flag and they want you to sign the flag for them and I put them in the car and, back in the day when I used to have to twist somebody's arm and get a Polaroid yep. camera and a picture. Polaroid, yeah. Because they were a dollar a piece for the I pictures. I still. We take a picture and I'd sign the picture. The kids would sit in the car. They'd lose their mind. I still have from 19. I'm going to say 94. A picture of my son Polaroid. Sitting in your car. Really? John Chuck Schultz. There you go. Look at and that. I, and I know, um, you know, Al Amarino's watching, and, um, and I can remember, you know, you always hung around by Al because you never knew what was going to happen at the end, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> there, was this, there was this little kid with his father, and the kid's like looking at the car, looking at his father, looking at the kid, and Al says, you want to sit in the car? And, and the kid looks at his father, and the father's all stern and goes, so Al helps the kid in the car, and the kid's a race car driver for like five minutes. Yeah. Gets out of the car. Al gets a call from that guy's father. He was a big wig for Chrysler, sent him a sponsorship. Oh, like that's a great. big sponsorship. That's nice. See, that's that's so what you're for. Him sit in the car, and if Al, you, if you're still on watching, confirm that because sometimes people don't believe these things that I say because it's true. I don't remember. I don't forget nothing. Hey, you know, that's why I was a marketing buzzsaw of my sponsors. I mean, I, you know, I would talk about the road course car that happened accidentally. Um, that road course car that uh, happened accidentally was because it was driven directly into the wall head on. And there was no radiator, no front clip left in the thing. Wow. Uh, I think it might have had a motor, but I'm not sure. Right. Um, but it would, the whole front nose was held up by one, it was held up by half by half inch tubing. Wow. You couldn't push on the nose, you would have snapped it right off. Really? Oh, yeah. It was all just, it was all just a facade. Like, you, like it was, you were Paramount Pictures in the back lot. Wow. You know what I mean? So we'd pull it off the car. There's only a couple places you could push. We push it off the off the trailer at the uh, appearances and push it back on. And man, I'll tell you what, everybody looks at that car today and goes, yeah. "Man, that's a gorgeous car." Yeah. I'm like it certainly is. Jay Slice is in the chat room. He said, "Jay Slice, I, I built that body in three hours, and and it was an Impala body, with the lines and everything. The only thing I did not build was the roof, and that was when his brother was first going to drive for me. It's like a, two weeks before, like the second practice or something." And Brian, Brian says, oh, Joe's brother was like, we're going to make opening day? Opening day, we're going to make practice. They come out with his, their father, and they were looking. I don't think so. Bob Fine had stopped at the shop for an inspection or something. He goes, when are you guys going to be out, July? No, we're going to be out practice day. I just got so good at it. Because, you know, if you do something over and, and over and, and over, over again, again, you get good at it. Out of plasma, kind of... I, and Tommy Ryan, who's down out now working for Hendrick, he taught me that sometimes all you need is a railroad tie to make your bends. A railroad tie yeah. and a rubber mallet. Straightening tie rods with a railroad tie. Just bam, bam. And then whatever bend is not, you can't get totally straight, he adjusted off the ends. Right. He told me a lot of stuff just by watching. Could you see a lot with the bottle of Jack Daniels on the way? Oh, yeah. It was when he was <laughs> welding, he had the stick. He had, he had the stick. <laughs> and the bottle of Jack in the other hand. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, what's he doing? <laughs> yeah. And then I got that, that welding eye thing. Yeah. And my Uncle Johnny. He, Felt he, like you had sand in your eyes? You know what he said to me? He said, Suck it up. No. He said, go home. Get a couple of potatoes. Put them on your eyes. They'll be fine. And that they were fine. Didn't go to no, there was no urgent care back then. They can't do anything for it anyway. <laughs> and I could, yeah, I couldn't go to my mother and say, oh, my, my eyes, if sand, there's like sand some, in them. You're not supposed to look. Yeah. Oh, my father would have killed me. He would have killed me. My mother was, that's what you get for this recent stuff, you know. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, that's why we had the, the half by half inch tubing. That's all I had in the shop. We brought the car back in pieces. I'm telling you, there was no front on the front of this car. We had an appearance the next day. Yeah. And I was like, stand back, because here we go. And I just started banging stuff out. I said, clip it on there. We had, yeah. there were vice grips holding it, and it wasn't even riveted. Had vice grips holding it on, man, that car looked cool. You awesome. know the Joe Brothers, Roger Maynard called them the Joe Brothers because they look alike. But Jay Slice just went, he goes, that I was good at bodywork and painting. And, um, but if it was a problem with the motor, forget about forget it. Forget about it. Now, I'm, I'm online. I'm online. Go out to run the feature. Flip the switch. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. I'm flipping out, I'm hitting the stand. What the heck's going on? Open the hood up! Don't send me open the hood, because all I'm going to see is a block, heads, and a, you know, and a and hair a, cleaner. And a, and a round thing on top. You know? <laughs> all of a sudden, somebody goes over. Puts Fuel. the wire back on. Electric. Try it now. Vroom! <laughs> Starts right now. <laughs> I was so stupid when it came to motors. Stupid. I had no clue. No clue. I don't know. What are you going to do? Yeah. I never blew a motor, so I never had to work on one or fix it. I'll tell you what, I, well, I wish I could say I never blew a motor, but that's why I had Jack Merkel in the stands. What an ear that guy had. Yeah. He'd come back, he'd come into the pits afterwards and go, it's not tacking all the way out. Are you, you, what's your memory tack at? You're probably doing about 5,500 RPM. That's all you're getting out of this thing? And I memory tack, and it's 5,500 yeah. RPM. He knew, man. He knew. Yeah. But I'm like, Jack, I'm flying. Yeah. My engine builder had PCHS and great motors that I got from him towards the end. And he wouldn't go to the races. He goes, I go to the races to enjoy them. But I don't want to hear my name. You know, blah, 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 to car 17, blah, 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 to car. He goes, no, no. So I don't go. He goes, come to me Sunday through Friday and tell me what it is. Bring the video even. I'll listen to the video. I'll tell you what's wrong. And he did. It was weird. He goes, bring the video. Okay. I said, well, first time I said, like, why the video? Is a video easier than bringing the whole car here or taking the motor out and bringing it here? Oh, yeah. He goes, I hear it right now. All right, change this, do this, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, he was good. Yeah. He was good. Most of them are. Most of them are. Oh, well, what are you going to do? I think we're coming to, to, to close to an end. I think we're over. Oh. Are we? We're paying I felt like I'm doing the Jerry Lewis marathon over here. Yeah. Yeah. All right, time and a half. Time and a half. All right. Anyway, I believe the uh, the Cup guys they'll be in Richmond this this weekend, so that's always a, a nice race. Yeah. Always a good one. So one of on my bucket list racetracks, but uh, that should be good. And um, appreciate you guys sticking with us this long. Hey, you know these guys are all right. These, you know, we have our regulars, and we got some good people here. And, well, I tell uh, you, we, we have some some important people, and there's some people that come on here that, you know, that you 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 want a Scott Tapley, a race director here on Long Island, who who comes all the way from Maine, I believe, to 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 be the race director. More kudos for also you, boy. I tell you, it's a long way to go. Motorsport Park, and, uh, and, uh, Steve Halpin, he was always uh, announcer at Rivet, Rivet. Yeah. Riverhead and always does a nice job and, and he's been doing it so long he doesn't need notes. <laughs> so <laughs> thank him. But I thank everybody. And they do a great uh, job over there. They I do. really I really enjoy them announcing. Oh yeah. And then they play off each other. It's a good deal. And, and yeah. Bill Batch, aka Big A twenty two. Um we, we always have some good laughs. So and everybody, everybody that's on watching tonight. Yeah. Um we, we appreciate that. And uh, even the chat room people. You know, we still have people in the chat room, and yep. it just works out better for them. But uh, it's all good. So, uh, again, thank you. Thank you for spending some time, taking time out of your busy schedules to be with us tonight. Spread the word. Let everybody know. You know We're here every Monday night, 7 o'clock. If you have any questions, anything you want to ask or learn from racing, just PM us, message us, call us, whatever you want to do. See us in the street. Yeah, we're interactive. Yeah. Why not? That's we'll, what we're here for. We'll, we'll, we appreciate you guys joining in, and we like your, your comments. Uh, absolutely. Right. Yeah, you want you guys to be part of the show. And go to our about. website. We got the Marty Himes uh, shirts, where the proceeds will go to the Marty Himes Museum. Yep. If and you buy any of Ravio shirts, half the proceeds go to the Marty Himes Museum. Right. And, uh, so we want to sell a lot of those. And take a look at our contest and see if we got something going on for the Paramount. Yes. And, uh, Paramount Theater, we always have tickets for them. You can uh, sign up to win tickets for the Paramount. Exactly. So. And if you don't see something there that you like, you go to ParamountNY.com. Right. They have a lot of great shows over there. It's a good venue. 
Right. And don't be afraid to say you saw them at inradio.com. Absolutely. Right. And uh, say a prayer for everybody, for Mike Stefanik, his family, his friends. Yes. And uh, if uh, you're feeling it, we'll be praying for you guys as well. And, and if we see the arrangements, we will post them on our website and Facebook, the Five Below Five On um, page, page on Facebook and our website. So yeah. with that, everybody, good night. Thank you. Give somebody a hug. Tell them you love them. See you next week. Thank you.